Good afternoon. He's a bit weird, isn't he? Surely that makes it even harder to see me. <laughs> I think you're wrong. So if you own a dog who runs off into crowded areas, so you have to shout his name after him, don't call him Death to the West. <laughs> Milton Jones isn't my whole name. My whole name is Milton 79 Heathfield Road Jones. Because my dad heard you could save tax if you put your house in your son's name. <laughs> what a day it's been. Spent the morning attaching a lot to the front slow down burglars who arrive by barge. <laughs> no, don't bother. <laughs> then no one turned up to the first meeting of my sarcasm club. Despite loads of people saying how much they were looking forward to it. <laughs> And I tried to rescue a man in the high street who was being eaten whole by a giant maggot. And he shouted, get off my sleeping bag. <laughs> then in the afternoon I gave some ice cubes to some junior doctors as their placards demanded. Turns out they wanted justice. <laughs> Sometimes it's just ice. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me where I get my shirts. Once a year I travel to the Himalayas. I walk four days into the mountains. I climb one particular mountain. There's a cave at the top. There's a hermit who lives in it. And he orders them for me on the internet. <laughs> Do I ever get recognised? I was on the train the other day, there was a bloke opposite. It's you, isn't it? I said, yes. So you're probably, probably going to put this in one of your skits. I said, it's not really entertaining enough. Anyway, we were both right. <laughs> live in a flat with three girls, uh, but one day they found out. <laughs> My heroes, Flipper, thank you. <laughs> also, George Best. No, I like George Best. No, no, I like Zippy best. <laughs> Only at Rewind. <laughs> so I learned the English language by being locked in a room with a box full of records. It wasn't easy, but if I had to do the same, I would, my friend, Fernando's. <laughs> 
done my research. <laughs> so, what a lovely audience from all over the world. Anyone here from outside the United Kingdom? Where are you from? United States. United States. I've just come back from America. All the way across on the flight, my wife was going, why don't you get an upgrade? Why don't you get an upgrade? Took a bit of time, but in the end I got a better wife. <laughs> When I was in America, I really got into the culture. I went into a shop and the guy said, have a nice day, and I didn't, so I sued him. <laughs> when I was in America, I saw one of those very, 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 very large Americans. He said he fitted kitchens. I said, I bet you don't. <laughs> When I was in America, I went up to this girl, I said, what's your name? She said, Chantel. I said, well, if you're not going to tell me your name. <laughs> then she had got a job in America, teaching geography as a foreign language. Any other countries represented? Yeah. Yeah, where? Yeah. Wales? Yeah. Whereabouts in Wales? South? <laughs> it's not very specific, is it? Whereabouts in South Wales? Where? The Rhondda Valley? I'll just say South Wales if I don't know. <laughs> I know you did. That was the joke. <laughs> I've got a bit of Welsh blood myself uh, on a kitchen knife. <laughs> says this is fantasy he might just be talking about his fizzy drink <laughs> Ten thousand steps on the way down. <laughs> Argentina, interesting place. Mind you, they only use knives and spoons. They get the knives from the north in the knife lands, they get the spoons from the south in the spoon lands. Unfortunately for them, we own the Falklands. <laughs> Laughing good, cheering bad. <laughs> South Africa, that's an interesting place. Mind you, if you're in Starbucks in Johannesburg and there's a steamroller nearby, don't order a flat white. <laughs> Protected, but it turns out it wasn't protected. Oh. You should have come to my sarcasm club. <laughs> I'd love to have seen you there. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me where I get my trousers. Once a year. I travelled to South America. 
I rode four days into the jungle. Eventually I come to the tallest tree. There's a tree house in the top. Of course it's at the top. There's a hermit who lives in it. And he phones the other hermit in the Himalayas. <laughs> he orders them for me on the internet. <laughs> Apparently I brought my biological parents out in a rash. Uh, so I was brought up by my non-biological parents. <laughs> My brother, he's in his final year, if he doesn't stop annoying me. <laughs> it's not his fault, when he was young he fell into a snow globe. Managed to survive, just uh, badly shaken. <laughs> nervous when anyone with dandruff sneezes. <laughs> My uncle, he always complained of being in a claustrophobic marriage, uh, but he died quite recently, surrounded by his wife. <laughs> Statistically, it's amazing how many people seem to die as a direct result of being surrounded by their families. <laughs> My happiest memory, though, is writing my name in the snow with my granddad. Well, until his nose got frostbite. <laughs> my other grandfather, very proud of him. He was involved in a very successful surprise bombing raid over Germany about ten years after the war. <laughs> My other grandfather. <laughs> we knew things were serious for him when he had to have a camera inserted internally, uh, but he was annoying the wedding photographer. <laughs> My other grandfather. <laughs> was one of the last people to have one of the old lead pacemakers. Died quite recently. Lovely man. We buried him with a heavy heart. <laughs> recently, I jumped out of an aeroplane. 4,000 feet, 3,000, 2,000. I pulled the cord. My cagoule tightened. <laughs> Myself, uh, this means nothing to me. Well oh. <laughs> Recently, I drove into the back of what was an unmarked police car. <laughs> It all got very complicated very quickly. They demanded my name and address, which, as some of you know, is the same thing. <laughs> you can't arrest me, I shouted. I've seen those TV traffic cop shows. I haven't even got a blurry number place. <laughs> you got a long story short, those riot bands aren't nearly as much fun as they sound. I said to them in the back, I know, I know, it can't be easy being a policeman. I mean, no one ever phones up, dials 999 to get you out to see the first crocus of spring. And if you remember, even when I did do that... <laughs> anyway, they threatened to hold me indefinitely. I said a hug of two to three minutes would be more than sufficient. <laughs> And I even tried to give them the name of someone I believe to be a serial killer. Well, he seemed to be burying the bodies near the place of his work, but they didn't want to know the name of that vicar. <laughs> Something wrong with the system, they say. Overall crime is down, but who steals overalls anyway?
My aunt, she's almost Irish. Uh, her name's Iris. <laughs> a lot of angry people about. I was in the high street the other day. There was a person with a petition. He came up to me and said, A petition about ivory hunting. I said, Are you for or against? He said, Well, would you endorse? There aren't any elephants endorsed. <laughs> And you shouldn't joke about such things, I could put you in hospital. I looked him in the eye and I said, I was born in hospital. <laughs>